Today, I'm going to be giving you guys some tips on how to level up as a solo wizard. Leveling up to level 20 is a lot easier than it used to be, but as a wizard with no gear, it can be a little challenging. So let's get right into the video. First, let's talk about our perks and skills. So the first perk I would get level 1 as wizard is Arcane Mastery. Not only is it going to do more damage for our magic missiles, making it easier to clear mobs, but it also reduces the cast time of magic missiles and invis and with invis being our only escape casting that as fast as you can is very important for the second perk at level 5, I would go with Quick Chant. Spell casting speed is very important on Wizard because we want to cast our spells as fast as possible. After I recorded this video, Wizard actually got a buff. I know, surprising, right? And Quick Chant is actually so much better. So I would highly go with Quick Chant being your second perk. At level 10, we're going to go with Knowledge as our third perk. Not only does this increase our spellcasting speed as well, but as I said before, it's going to help increase our spell recovery speed. And for our final perk at level 15, we can go a couple different perks here. I chose to go with Ice Mastery because it makes kiting players easier, but we can also go Mana Surge to increase our magical damage bonus, or we can go Ice Shield for extra armor rating and to cause a slow on players that hit us. But for this build, we're going to go with Ice Mastery. Now for skills, there's a couple skills we can go. If you want to level up as fast as you can we're gonna want to go to crypts and clear as many mobs as we can and for that i think we should go meditation meditation recently got buffed and you get spells back really fast now if you want to focus more on pvp than pve then i would suggest replacing meditation for intense focus Intense focus is really strong in PvP, and when our spell casting speed and our damage are really low, intense focus is going to help increase our DPS. Now for the spells that I think you should go with. The best spells to start off with are definitely Fireball. It's one of Wizard's best spells. Take off slow, put in Zap. Zap only does a lot of damage when we have gear, but it's one of the few spells that's hit scan, so it's really good against other ranged characters. Of course, Magic Missile. This is a really good spell at clearing mobs. Invis, a really good skill for escaping or to juke players. And we're going to remove Haste and put on Ice Bolt. Ice Bolt is very good at kiting players, and it's also really good at sniping at longer ranges when somebody's escaping from you. Now, if we head over to Merchants and we come over to the Squire, we can click on Base Gear and we can customize our Base Gear loadout. I would go with this Squire build right here. For the weapons, we're going to go with Spellbook because Spellbook is the best casting weapon. For the second weapon slot, we can either go Magic Staff, we can go Quarter Staff, Rondell Dagger, you can kind of choose whatever you like. Now for the head slot, we go with the wizard hat because it gives us a magic power. Then for the chest piece, the adventure tunic because it gives us three health. Then for the hands, we're going to go with rawhide gloves because it gives us knowledge. Same with the pants, we're going to go leather chosses. And for the boots, occultist boots because it also gives us knowledge. Your squire might not look like this. You have to complete a couple quests to get more gear unlocked for your squire. I believe if you just start level one with no quest done, you start off with this selection right here. So what I would do, probably go cloth pants wizard shoes because it gives us magic power something like this now for the slots of course we're gonna have bandages and heal potions we have a protection potion because bows are a wizard's worst enemy and then we also have a campfire which if you don't have meditation then bringing a campfire is very important because it's gonna help us recover spells faster and i'm also bringing a loot if you don't know a loot has knowledge on it if you pull out the loot and then sit down, that extra knowledge from the loot is going to help cover spells faster because it's giving us more knowledge. And this also works for the Leer. We can actually take off these torches and if you want to really min-max, we can go the Leer. And now you, you could pull out the Leer for that extra resourcefulness and then you could open doors a little bit faster. So let's talk about what gear you should be looking for. For the main stats you want to look for on Wizard, the number one stat is True Magic Damage. True Magic Damage is how we do a ton of damage. It not only adds one point of damage, but that damage is going to completely ignore all magic resist. The next is Knowledge. 
Knowledge increases our spell casting speed, which increases our DPS, and it also increases our spell recovery speed. The next is movement speed and health. The more movement speed, the better because we can dodge more things. And then, of course, the more health we have, our survivability goes way up. And then after that, you can just kind of go with whatever. Magic power is an okay stat to go for. You can go for magical damage bonus, will, agility, resourcefulness. There's a lot of decent stats you could look for. Now, what specific gear should you be looking for? Well, the best casting weapon is spellbook. So you definitely want to try to find a spellbook. If you find a magic staff or a crystal ball that does way more damage than your spellbook, then you can always use that. And of course, you want something in your secondary slot to help clear mobs. This could be the crystal sword since it recently got buffed. It could be a staff with staff mastery. It could be a rondel dagger, just whatever to help you clear mobs. For the head slot, you got two different options. You got the wizard hat and you got the leather cap. The leather cap is going to be better just because it gives us more HP. The wizard hat, it gives you more damage and it's less of a movement speed penalty. So both are actually a pretty good option. Now for the chest piece, we got a Mystic Vestments, an Oracle Robe, and an Adventure Tunic. Mystic Vestments or Adventure Tunic are really good in solos because you're either increasing your damage with extra will and it has a low movement speed penalty, or the Adventure Tunic, which makes you more tanky. So you could go any of these two options. The Oracle Robe, it's not bad, but it has a little bit more of a movement speed penalty. And since Quick Chant got buffed, I wouldn't imagine you need all that knowledge. But if you find an Oracle Robe, then you could definitely wear it. Now for the leg slot, we got a couple different legs we could go. Loose Trousers are always good because they give us more movement speed. Leather chosses are really good because it gives us knowledge. Then if you can't find those first two, you could always get leather leggings, which gives you a little bit more damage. But I would highly go with either loose trousers or leather chosses. For the feet slot, you either want to go for light foot boots or occultist boots. Light foots are going to be more for the caster wizard because you're not building as heavily into a melee option. And the occultist boots are more for if you want to run staff mastery or run a more heavy close quarters option. And you need that extra spell casting speed and that extra damage. For the hand slot, I would either go with these two gloves, either the reinforced gloves giving us more HP or rawhide gloves giving us more spell casting speed. You can go leather gloves if you want to run some kind of dagger or fast crystal sword build. That's totally up to you. But uh, if you want to play more caster or staff mastery build, I would recommend either of these two. For the necklace, always go Phoenix Choker because that gives us the most amount of true magic. And then for the ring, just go whatever you're lacking. So we need more HP. So we went with rings of vitality. Now, like I said, if you're trying to level up fast, Going to Crips with Meditation is your best bet. Crips is very easy to go through, but if you struggle with any of the mobs, there are many videos about how to dodge every mob in the game. You'll want to take a red static exit to Hell. Now don't worry, Hell in Normals is very easy, and there's no need to be scared of it. You can find many safe spots in most modules. But if you need to take down the Berserker and you can't find a safe spot, you can crouch and go underneath the side he attacks. For the Centaur, it's the same exact thing. You're rarely going to run into PvP and Crips because other players are probably new or they're trying to level up or they're going bossing. Now, if this is boring to you and you prefer to PvP instead and you rather go to Goblin Caves, then that's when you want to switch out for intense focus. But before you go into Goblin Caves, be aware of the gear score bracket. If you're unfamiliar with the gear score bracket, each item in the game has a gear score to it. Depending on your gear score, you're going to get put in a certain bracket with other players with similar gear to you. I'll go over a brief summary of how to go against each class. Barbarians are one of the hardest classes to go against as a base kit wizard. They have a ton of health, a ton of magic resist if they have iron will, and they move quickly. The biggest problem new players do against Barbarian is run away. Once you turn your back against Barbarian, they will catch you and once they hit you with Achilles Strike, you're basically dead at that point. What you'll want to do instead is kite the Barbarian with as many spells as you can and once the Barbarian gets close, use your invis as a juke rather than an escape. Once you use invis, switch directions and get ready to cast an Ice Bolt or Zap and get ready to repeat the process. 
Now for Bard. It's very rare you're gonna go against a Bard in low gear lobbies. I only saw one Bard in my entire playthrough to level 20 and I didn't even get to fight him. Low gear Bards are easy to play against because they're not very tanky, so there isn't much to worry about that. Now for Clerics. Cleric is very similar to Barb. Very tanky with good movement speed. You'll want to do the same exact thing with Cleric, but you'll want to be careful of their range attacks like Judgment or Holy Strikes. But as long as you space carefully, it shouldn't be a problem. Druids. Druids are very easy to go against. They are more of a rat class, so most likely they will run away from PvP. But if they try to run at you with Panther, just hit them with any spell to take them into Dreamwalker. When they are in Dreamwalker, you can damage them with Fireball. They're a pretty squishy class, so they'll end up running away or end up dying. Fighter used to be the easiest matchup for Wizards, but with the recent buffs to Weapon Mastery, they can use bows without penalty. This makes Fighter better at ranking range than wizard unfortunately and you're gonna have to play around what kind of bow they are using if they're using the longbow just know that the longbow has six shots before they reload and it has a pretty slow reload so bait out four to five shots then play aggressively on the other hand recurve has eight shots and survival bow has 10 shots before reload but it reloads a lot faster you want to try to bait out the shots and get zaps in between the draw of each arrow a good way to bait out shots is by casting your spell then canceling it and going back into cover ranger the same as fighter but ranger has better perks for the bow i would recommend to not fight rangers at all it's not that rangers are overpowered or anything like that it's just rangers heavily play on traps and once you hit a trap you're dead so it's best to just go the other way now for rogue rogue relies heavily on gear they do very low damage with little gear you still have very low health as a wizard so you should still be very cautious constantly check your surroundings no matter what you do whether it's looting a chest looting a player walking through a door anything just always check your surroundings if a rogue starts chasing you down do not panic. Just kite them with ice bolts and get ready to magic missile them. Warlock. Warlock is in the same boat as you. They do little damage in base gear. They rely heavily on magical healing and they have little to no magical healing in, in low gear so they will struggle fighting at range. Try to play as aggressively as you can and try to force them to phantomize. Then while they're in phantomize, then you can hit them with fireballs. If they're using demon form, then just play it how you would a barbarian or a cleric. And if they haven't used demon form or phantomize, they could have blow of corruption so just make sure you have good spacing wizards you'll rarely find wizards in solos but if you do find a wizard you can either run back behind a corner pop intense focus and get a quick fireball in or you could just zap them to death use the tips that i said from fighters and rangers start casting your spell then cancel it to go back into cover after they use zap or fireball peek the corner again and zap them and that's about everything i hope this guide makes your experience more enjoyable because we definitely desperately need more wizards and solos. If any of you have tips of your own, make sure to leave them down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.